for the time being I've got my stump anvil in this homemade jig. I thought it might be too high but I've used it once and I kind of like it. Within the pipe which I formed one inch square on the top end I put some clay in to take up the space left by the tapered shank on the bottom end. And this way there's less wobble. Not perfect but works. Or I could just use this setup in my vise and maintain that height. Or take it out of the jig and just lock it in the vise directly. Though I don't like to use it like this because of the vibration and loud sound. I'll be using that pretty soon. So now on to today's project. This is my last piece of this hexagonal stock of medium carbon. So uh, I had a customer ask if I could make him one of those hex hammers. And so I'm going to do that and I'll use this uh, uneven bevel chisel, or at least what I call uneven bevel chisel, to slit this open. I've got this tongue that I made a while back that will allow me to hold it 90 degrees to the cutting edge. If you want more info on this chisel, I'll insert a link here. I just take a few simple strikes to establish my marks on either side. With this sort of operation, it's critical that your first few strikes be as aligned as possible. If you're off here, that will be exacerbated as you go deeper. I need to thank Paul Shuley for his extremely generous donation, helping to keep the channel in high clover. Thanks very much. So this is a good chance to use this chisel and see where it performs well and where it might be improved. I haven't done a ton yet, but so far it's holding a good edge. I use this hammer to mainly strike top tools and it's seen better days. I need to redress it or maybe make a new hammer for this purpose. So I've been meaning to buy a blower and hook that up somehow to get a better blast in my small forge for projects like hammers. my wife's hair dryer for demonstration purposes, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a significant difference. So now I'm really making headway. The outdoor lighting and shadows at different angles make my steel appear either hotter or cooler than it actually is. I'll show two other clips here that demonstrate this really well. The striking end is holding up really well. The business end has started to dull a bit, so I'll dress that. Look carefully here how the workpiece seems to heat up as I move my arm, a trick of light. 
So I think you can better understand the blower effect in this clip. the air blast the Ford sounds like a jet engine and so I need to be aware of that and take that into consideration given my location and having neighbors all around. So the slitter made it through. Uh, there were a few more heats that I didn't show on camera and I kind of drifted a little bit to one side so I'm truing that up a little bit here. What I found is that if I hold my arm at 90 degrees to the length of a workpiece, I tend to veer to one side. So this chisel needs to be dressed again, but it's done a good job. I think I want to make the cutting angle even steeper. The striking end is just perfect. This piece of steel here is the end of a Japanese pneumatic stone chisel bit. The steel is supposed to be excellent, though I can't remember what kind it is. I might make one of these chisels out of this piece. So I start to drift a little bit with this chisel and also take a little bit off of one cheek since I had veered off to one side as I said before. I want to give an extra thank you to folks who donated during the last live stream. They are Dave Rora, Jay Lucas, Brett Thompson, and Rigid Ironworks. Thanks very much. is my new drift. It's a little bit too long front to back for this one, so I'll go to my old drift. So here's another perfect example of the trick of light. Look how hot the hammer looks right now. And then here, under the shadow. The truth of the temperature of the color 
is tending more towards what it looks like under shadow or in a darker environment. So I mainly wanted to show here the slitting with that chisel and then the subsequent drifting of this hammer eye. Fast forward and here's the completed hammer. Most handmade items carry a bit of essence of the maker. Nothing fancy here, but this should serve its new owner well. Catch you guys next time.